tell me when you're ready. We're ready. I'm ready. Okay, um, can you hear me? Yes, can you hear me? Yeah, no, that's fine. Uh, well, firstly, thank you again. Um, I understand you're a very busy man. Um, I've been thinking quite a lot about what you said the last time, and um, my principal question that goes through my mind constantly um, is the issue of uh, consciousness. And um, where, if you like, does consciousness stop? Um, and as, well, as I self-reflect and, and, and um, inquire, um, the separation between the mind and consciousness doesn't seem to occur. And I wondered, firstly, to ask you, how would you define consciousness? Consciousness, first of all, is indefinable. Because anything you define, you limit it to, to the thoughts, to the mind. And consciousness is prior the mind, behind the mind, or beyond the mind. So consciousness, the wise point that it is changeless, it is omnipresent, it is the substratum that all appearances take place in it, means thoughts appear and disappear within consciousness. So consciousness can never be lost. Consciousness is silence, means it's absolute. Consciousness has no beginning, no end, because it's changeless. Therefore, it is infinite. Now, the only thing that makes appear consciousness disappear is the attention and identification with the thoughts as me. Yet consciousness illumines itself and every thought that appears. Without consciousness there is no thoughts and when there is no thoughts there is no world. That's the, the natural order. So consciousness enables the whole phenomena world to appear and exist. And consciousness is your true nature. What then would be the purpose of the mind? The purpose of the mind is to discriminate get clarity and disidentify from the false notion it, it got confused basically I'll clarify it. the mind there is a story maybe I tell the story it's an, an, an ancient story that a wise man told me it's called the Maya story and it begins there is the source and the source is beginningless, endless. The source is changeless. It is within everyone and everyone is within it. It is every place and there is no place it is not. It is everywhere simultaneously at all times. From the source, Maya came out. And Maya has two faces. One face she's looking at the source and all she knows is source. The other face is looking out and she forgets the face looking in. Maya, she is beginningless although she has an end. Maya is like a seed. We can see that in the seed there is the potential of the whole forest one seed, one tree, one tree, many seeds, many seeds, many trees, the whole forest. <coughs> Yet if we take from the seed any of the five elements, which is space, air, 
fire, water and earth, the seed cannot manifest. So Maya is the same way. If you take, this, you take the source away, Maya cannot exist. So we go back, Maya has two faces. One face she's looking at the source. And the moment she looks at the source, all she knows is the source itself. The other face is looking out. The moment she looks out, she forgets the face looking in. The moment she forgets, she gets scared and she starts to create. Now, Maya is the first thought, I. And then she starts to move to my body, my parents, my beliefs, my ideas, my toys, my religion, my country my my mind and she gets so far away with the mice that now she has to turn around like a boat go through the mice through the eye back to the source now if you look at, at the story the story actually points exactly from the source and the journey of the mind back to consciousness because the source is just another word for consciousness or pure consciousness we can see that the moment the mind is going out it forgets the face looking in so the moment it forgets the face looking in it goes out and it is looking for the source in its own creation yet Maya is such that she can create anything except one thing, the source itself. Because she uses the power of the source to create, she can create all, everything. Except she cannot use the power to create the source itself. So what happens, Maya is creating and she's looking for the source in her creation. She can't find it. She gets scared and then she starts to create again so as long as the mind goes outward it is restless so the moment we direct the mind back in towards consciousness which basically this is evolution it's not creation it's exactly the opposite direction creation is going down evolution is coming back to consciousness just for the metaphor is coming up okay? creation is going out evolution is going back in so the whole purpose of the mind is to seek consciousness in order to dissolve into consciousness and rest basically the moment the mind forgot consciousness now it is looking at looking for consciousness in the objects of the world yet because it cannot find consciousness in the objects of the world it keeps creating more and more and more objects yet it's always restless until it rests in consciousness itself and objects of the world would be the same analogy creating more and more ideas and beliefs because the mind gets attached to other thoughts it never gets attached to an object it can't if we talk about evolution um, just from a very basic perspective is there not value with respect to the purpose of the mind in terms of you know, I, I, I agree that, that, that what you're saying is the mind creates um, an autobiographical self. It, it, it creates itself. Um, but if one looks at, again, a very basic level, a biological level, uh, for the purpose of the mind, um, surely, we, and, and an evolutionary perspective, we wouldn't be here talking the way we're talking if we didn't have the mind, you know, in terms of arts and science and technology, uh, the creation by the mind of the past and the future itself produces imagination. Um, 
so one wonders yes one needs to introspect and and and, and uh, make an internal inquiry um, but surely um, there is a specific evolutionary purpose to the mind obviously that whatever is happening that's exactly what the mind needs collectively and individually because it's happening yeah and um, so we can say that's its purpose it's to create all this in order for it to wake up from the dream that it created what direction is it's going out which is okay because maybe the mind has to go so far out to realize that there is no way out out so the only way out is in so it's all a matter when the mind would be ready in, it, in the evolution to turn its attention back in and then wake up from the dream that it created itself and get got lost in it so there is no problem with what is happening because it is happening this is a fact so that's what is required and needed because that's what is the question is the mind for each being ready to look within and only when they get tired from the suffering of going out and going out and going out they might be ready to look within but you would still agree that the mind has a purpose in terms of its evolutionary function yeah to wake itself out from up from the dream that's its purpose because we can say that all living beings desire to be happy always everybody is looking for the happiness which is just another name for consciousness so they're looking for that consciousness whether it's out or in whether ignorantly or knowingly still they're looking for the same thing so the whole movement of the thoughts is for the same thing is to rest this is why the mind gets attached to each, its desires because if we look at the mechanism of desire collectively I want something and now I start to think about it yes and then I maybe take action up upon it the closer I imagine that I am to what I want to gain from my desire the happier I am yet I'm not at peace the moment I get what I want for an instant the mind rests and then I get a glimpse of happiness and because I'm going out I think that I got the happiness from the object that I gained or received yet the happiness came from within it cannot be derived from the object yet because the mind is going outwardly it cannot recognize it there is a veiling there so it go it wants take action the moment it gets what it wants it rests for a moment and then it reacts again and it desires something new so we can see that basically the mind gets attached to a desire in order to be free from desire for a moment if we understand it and we direct the mind back to consciousness it can rest there infinitely but is it not a biological function to desire I mean you know at a very basic level one might talk about happiness but one one you you, you could you could very easily um, intersperse the word um, need you know uh, if one talks about definition um, but perhaps I could put it another way um, talking about animals and, and humans um, when would you say we become conscious 
as a human or even in the animal kingdom? Consciousness, if we go back to the Maya story, is within everyone and everyone is within it. So it's to ask, is any object in this earth is out of space? Or the whole planet earth is within the space? the ether of space so can it step out from the space so can anybody step out of consciousness of course not the question is does the mind recognize basically that a uh, consciousness can be realized only from within and cannot be recognized externally so the moment the mind identifies I as a separate entity with a physical body, then all my desires around the objects of the world. Means you would see that the moment the mind is going outward within you or anybody is all around thoughts about someone and something. Means animate object and inanimate object. Because that mind that I, ego, identifies with the physical form, means it thinks and believes it is a physical body. It reduced it, uh, itself to a small capsule, physical form, when in fact the mind is not limited to a form. It's much vaster than a form. So the moment the mind goes in, inwards, and it leaves the identification with the physical form then it starts to, to realize that it is so vast than what it thought and limited itself to a physical form and that mind even is a tiny aspect within consciousness so when the mind disappears there is pure consciousness which is infinite boundless limitless ever free and that's what everyone is looking for everyone even if we take it to the most basic and we say food clothing shelter anybody that is starving is unhappy the moment they get some food the mind rests and there is a glimpse of that happiness satisfaction so the mind would call it in many names yet it's the moment the mind rests when it gets what it wants, a glimpse of that consciousness, of that happiness, shines through. So would you say there are different grades of consciousness? No. Consciousness is absolute, means changeless. Grade of consciousness is grade of states of mind, not pure consciousness. Would you, would you would you then say that can consciousness observe itself consciousness is aware of itself by itself definitely that's the only thing it is aware of so an analogy that would be that we can recognize or pointing is the sun the sun from its point of view all it knows is light so it illuminates it illumines itself by itself it doesn't need another sun for light right and it illumines everything else so consciousness illuminates itself and everything else which is thoughts and objects of the world So can it observe itself? Yes. Okay, so, so, so it can observe itself, but there are no sort of grades of consciousness. There's no sort of consciousness meter, if you like. No. The meter is only in the mind. More or less. Okay. The meter is in the mind, not in pure consciousness. Pure consciousness is beyond the mind. And because it's everyone's nature, everyone can directly experience pure consciousness without understanding in the mind and without practicing and without uh, thinking about it. 
Yet the whole work is to undo in the mind the false identification that I am a separate entity, a physical, limited, small form, body. So would you say the self comes to the mind? Mm, no, I would say that the, the, when the less identification or when the abstraction is removed in that moment, the self shine through. So I would give another example. When I believe I'm a physical form, so in the morning when the I thought appears, it identifies instantaneously with the physical body and then I am in the world as a physical body. So I am a body inside the world. In the world now, I wake up and it's all cloudy day. And I always wake up into this cloudy day. So when I look up, I see dark clouds and there is more light because it's not dark. Yet when I look up, I don't see the sun. So for me, when somebody says there is sun, I say, what do you mean there is sun? I can't see the sun. Now, one day I wake up and the clouds are moved, removed, and the sun reveals itself. It shines through. So from the mind, I can actually realize there is sun. Yet from the point of view of the sun, it's never affected by the clouds, if there are clouds or no clouds. So now I'll, I'll give the example. When I identify myself with the thoughts, believe the thoughts to be real, and then I identify myself as a physical body, then I look up and I only see the clouds. The sun doesn't go through. From point of view of consciousness, all there is is light. Now what happens when you work with the thoughts, examine the beliefs, discriminate the thoughts, the clouds are removed and the light shines through. Just like when the clouds are removed, the sun shines through and it reveals, it reveals itself. So the whole work is to remove the clouds, the confusion of the mind. So clouds would be a metaphor for a darkness, confusion. And if we look at the, the way light behaves, light is an interesting aspect in terms of particle and a wave. We can have, we can block light, yet the light is not affected by the block, yet if it is blocked from that moment, from where it is blocked on, there is darkness. So if we take a closed house, sealed completely, and there is one window that has perfect curtain that is dark, doesn't let the, the light go through. The moment we remove the, the curtain and a ray of light go through, it starts to illuminate the room. So in order to remove that curtain, we have to examine our ideas and belief because every belief is like a curtain that doesn't let the light go through and illuminate the mind itself from the darkness that it is in. So that's what this work does. It enables to remove that curtain so the light which is you shine through and bring light into the mind and this is where light removes ignorance. This is how knowledge removes ignorance or light removes darkness. I mean you're saying that everybody is entitled or, 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 or is uh, at some point uh, capable of understanding consciousness but if one looks at... No, no, one, I'll just, let's be accurate. Nobody can understand consciousness. You are pure consciousness, you can directly experience it. Understanding is in the mind, the mind cannot understand something that is beyond it. So you can understand 
the nature of the mind. You can understand and examine the beliefs and see whether the thoughts are not real or real. Yes, when you examine them. You can understand about the mind. Yet about who you are, you can only directly experience yourself as pure consciousness. You cannot understand so pure consciousness. So would you say, perhaps it's, 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 it's a question that you're going to... Well, let me ask it. it you, 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 you're therefore saying that there is no neuronal equivalent of consciousness. I cannot say that. Because consciousness is within every cell of the body, so it's not separate. So I do not know. So when there is no thought, the consciousness maybe is enabling all the neurons and everything to function without it moving and doing anything. I do not know. Yes, but, but you know, the reason I ask that question is, 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 is uh, there are people that, have, that are in a coma. The people that have what is termed a brainstem coma, a coma as a result of an injury in part of the brain. And certainly from a biological or medical perspective, the self appears to go. Okay? That's um, not accurate. It's okay, not... What would you say? It's the mind that identifies with the body is absent there. Yet the mind is not limited to a physical form. From a point of view of a physical body, I cannot see it. The mind is not limited to a form. I mentioned before, only when you direct the mind inward and you leave the object for a moment, you start to realize that the mind can be without a, a physical form. But the mind has to be active in order to do that. The mind needs to be awake in order to introspect. It does it. Mm, it does it in the dream too. How do you know that? Because I've been uh, witnessing the waking and the dream and a, a state when there is no thoughts. Because see the wise point, and one would experience when they go inward. This is why one has to leave the body alone for some moments and to go in and work with the thoughts and experience that they lose body consciousness. Forgive me. Yes. But when you say one has to, who is the one that has to? The mind. Indeed. So if the mind is having to do it, the mind is part of the brain. So the brain, is it not an illusion or even a delusion that you are witnessing? It's the mind doing itself, which is part of the brain, which is part of neuronal chemistry. I, I, I'm not sure if I'm yeah. going around in circles there. Yeah, because you're stuck on the object. And this is where st science is stuck. And that's okay. I can't argue on that. The wise point for thousands of years, I've seen it from within. Anybody who goes in would come to recognize it, that the mind is not limited to a physical form. From the point of view I'm a physical body and I analyze the neurons and the brain, then I say, no, it's all connected. Fine, I understand. I can't argue on that. You have to leave the object to realize that it is not. To see that the mind travels in the space by itself, in the ether of space, because the mind creates space and time and the body is limited to space and time. So we can see that the body is limitation that the mind has. I'll, I'll bring it again. I'll give an example. When the thought appears, the first thought I, two things happen simultaneously. Space and time are created. Yes. Okay? The body though is limited to space and time. Because in order for me to be physically where you are, I can be instantaneously with the mind, yet with the body, it's 
how long it's going to take this physical form to get to where you are and what is the distance it's going to have to travel. In the mind instantaneously you can be there so the body has a limitation and if we stay and analyze only that limitation we would not make a quantum leap, we would not see it. What can we do? That's why the wise says fine you have to see and experience it from yourself and the only way is to put the attention inward and leave the body for a moment. But you're almost implying, or the inference there is that the mind and the brain are two separate things. The brain is just, I see, an antenna. For what? To, to receive the, the channels that the, the mind is trans transmitted. The, so you were saying that they're two separate things? The, I said that there is... Uh, forget even what I say. I always like to go back to the scriptures, what the seers of truth saw for thousands of years in different places around the planet. They didn't know each other. And they saw and, and shared the same, same thing. So either I don't see or they saw something wrong. So I'd like to be humble enough to start and say, maybe they saw something I don't see, so I better examine it, and maybe I would see it from within. Not, not adopt what they say, not take a new belief or dogma. No, I'm not talking about that. I mean, I would be open enough to say, hmm, okay, maybe I, my vision is obscured. Maybe I can see something internally. So I have to look within and search and maybe it reveals. And sure enough, it reveals when one looks within. So, so one second. The mind, we can say that there's one mind, yet it appears to be divided to many infinite minds or many millions or trillions, okay? So the, the wise compare it to wood and trees. The collective mind, which is one, is wood. The trees are individual uh -huh. minds. Yet if we look at every tree, no matter how many millions of trees there are, they are all made from wood. So every individual mind that identifies itself as a physical body is a tree. Yet the collective mind, which is one, is the wood. The collective mind is not identifying itself with a, a separate entity, individual entity. And in order for it to be seen, one has to leave the objects. And if you look, you would see that most of the day, your thought that you might have is about the objects of the world. People and objects. Someone and something. And these are objective thoughts. This is going out not even going in. And now one can sit in meditation, close their eyes, and all the thoughts they would have is still objective thoughts. They don't go in yet. Because all they have thought is what, what happened today and what the past, future, past, future, past, future. This is not going in. This is only shifting the attention to start to, to look the insanity of the mind identifying itself with the physical body. When you go in, the mind is more lucid and concentrated. It's not focused about the past and the future of my personal story as an individual entity. I, no, I see all of that, but I, but I, I also see, perhaps I'm deluded, but, uh, I also see that there is a purpose to the mind, that there is a purpose for, as you say, past, future, past, future. I think, you know, it, it, it's, it's the purpose or the biological or even evolutionary function of the mind that, that distinguishes us from 
uh, creatures in, 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 in uh, the rest of the animal kingdom. It, it has enabled who we are to become what we are at the state that we are in. It, it is all as a result of the brain, and, and, and for me, the brain and the mind are, are, are the same thing. Um, and perhaps that, that's a, a biological uh, um, miss take, if you like, uh, but that's the way I see it, um, because, uh, you, you know, I, ca I, I can't dissect or tease out the issues at present that one observes in the objective world, or relative world, if you like, where, where let's take... Um, so, just before you move, you write that whatever is happening that's what we need for the mind and that's its purpose because it's happening not only because it's happening but because you know one has to one has to ask the question sir which question um the, the question what is the purpose of consciousness you know why is it that to our to 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 to, to our knowledge so far man is the most conscious animal on the planet what i'm not i'm not sure about that i'm not the sure of consciousness i'm not sure that the man is most conscious the way well, men behave today on the planet they are less conscious than many other animals as a man as a man as identification with the form i would say the ego is a, not a conscious entity as pure, pure consciousness, yes, pure consciousness is not an animal, so it is the only conscious entity. Yet the way humans behave on the planet, I would take it back. I don't think man is so conscious. It's the only animal that kills itself for sport. It tortures animals just for its own satisfaction. It kills billions of animals every year just for its own, for greed. So this is not a conscious behavior. Mm. Not from the mind perspective. <laughs> no, sure. I, 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 we're I arrogant we're, and confused. We're, we're, we're confusing morals, ethics, and, 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 and consciousness. I, I, certainly, I, I believe so. But, but um, uh, I, I was going to, to let's, let's perhaps not ask what the, what the purpose of consciousness is. Um, from a biological perspective, because I, it's certainly a question that I ask myself, why is it that we are able... It, again, it, 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 it comes back to the issue of how does one define consciousness, and, and, and it's the thing that goes through my mind all the time. It's what indefinable. Is the consciousness? It's indefinable. So, in order for the mind to start to discriminate itself and the thoughts, it has to have a reference point. So, consciousness is changeless, yeah? So consciousness is changeless, it's non-dual, it is, has no beginning, no end, it has no place for any other because it alone exists. If you can find any of the attributes in the objects of the world or in the mind, then you realize consciousness. If you don't find it there, then negate it as not consciousness. And the more you negate, you remove the clouds, and then consciousness shines through. This is the process that is actually discrimination, is removing, cleaning, cleaning, and then what remains is that which is omnipresent, pure and aware of itself by itself. It doesn't need anything else. It doesn't need any other. It is already free. It's boundless, changeless. These are the wise definition for the mind which is in ignorance or darkness or in confusion to start to discern itself, to clean, to clean so the consciousness which is pure can reveal itself. I'll give another example because these analogies help the mind to start awakening the discernment within. There is a lake. The lake is pure consciousness, the water of the lake. Now on that lake there is sludge, green. It covers the whole lake. 
This sludge is the mind. Now from that sludge, a beautiful flowers grow out. Yes? Now it looks up, it sees the space, it is amazed by the different flowers that it sees. It looks down, it sees the sludge. It says the water doesn't exist. It asks another flower, hey, buddy, have you heard about the water? Pure consciousness, how would you define it? And they start to have a dialogue. Both of them look down and they say, water? There is no water. What are you talking about? And everybody are like this. Nobody see that without the water, there is no sludge, nor the flower can appear. So the moment the mind can, the flower would start to look within, in, inward, down to the sludge, and it would go down and we'd remove the sludge, suddenly the water would reveal itself. And this is what the mind is looking for. This is why it is searching for answers, searching for new things, first searching for improvement, for... It is searching, yet it is searching for the same thing, for consciousness, for the water. Yet all it has to understand that it has to remove the sludge and the water is there. And I would give another analogy because the analogy awakens the mind for some time if the mind is ready and ripe. If we have a room full of stuff, we open the door, no, we can't go in, it's full. The door is even going out from the room, so I can't walk into the room. Yeah, I see many objects. Now I say, whoa, I need the space. So let me go and build another room. Yet it's the same space. What I need to do is I need to open the door and start removing all the objects from the room and suddenly the whole space of the room is there, present. Was it not there before when all the objects were occupying the room? Of course it was. Yet I couldn't see it from the mind perspective because all I saw is the objects. So I have to remove the objects in order to see the, the empty space. I have to remove my ideas and my beliefs, my, the obstacles I have, because I was borrowing from externally, out of habit, just these beliefs without questioning them, to realize the empty space, which is just another pointer to pure consciousness. I don't need to create another room to have an empty room, to, to realize the space in the room. I have to remove the objects from the room. And the room is the body. And the objects is my objective thoughts. I have to examine my beliefs in order to realize and wake up to who I truly am which is pure consciousness. Well, I, I, yeah. <laughs> you, you, you had a mouthful there. I, I, you know, I, I, I agree with you that that belief, but, but, but beliefs surely are as a result of prior causes. You know, beliefs are as a result of prior causes. What, 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 you, I, I, you know, I agree with, with a lot of what you say. Um, that we create ourselves, that we create our uh, uh, identification, and you peel all that away. But all that we create, you know, uh, if you ask yourself, who am I? Am I a father? Am I a brother? Am except, I a son? Am ex I... Except what I hear, it's like I hear you understand and you say, yeah, I peel it. It's not so easy to examine and challenge your beliefs internally. So it, in one sentence it says, yeah, I just, I, I understand it. No, 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 no. It doesn't work that way. It's like when I have a belief and I'm invested in it and I hold on to it, the mind doesn't want to examine it. It is investing in it because it believes it is the truth. No. 
it, it, forgive me. No, yeah. no, no. It, 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 the mind is, 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 is more cunning than that. Surely, for me anyway. I mean, you know, maybe I'm schizophrenic. But, but, but the mind can actually observe the belief that it is attaching itself to and say, yes, I understand that, you know, um, the purpose of the mind is, is the desire for a new car. I understand that that car is transient, that it is an external object, that it is uh, evanescent, it will disappear, and that, you know, it will only temporarily satisfy me. The mind can observe all those things, but it doesn't necessarily stop the mind from pursuing that particular external object. Yeah. It, that, that, for me, is, is, okay. is, is the problematic issue. Yeah, that's right. You know what I'm saying? Yes. It's not only prob problematic to what appears your mind, it's it's the challenge for any mind because that's what's called the vasanas. Prior to that, when you inquire, I just invite you to inquire until you experience a gap of the thinking process. So you start experiencing just a gap of no mind. And then just afterwards, with the mind, realize what remained. This is a first step, because if I have a movie projected on a screen, even if I intellectually understand that the images that are projected on the screen are not real, I don't see the screen. Only if I get up and I go and touch the images, I experience that the only thing that is real is the screen. Yet even, sure. even then there is a veiling because I might be, wait, am I experiencing the images or the screen? Yet when the images stop for a moment, then there is a clear realization that what remains is the screen alone. So the screen is pure consciousness and the images that are projected are the thoughts of the mind. So I just sure. invite you or anybody who listens to this is to, it's very nice, all the theoretical, is to be still for your, with yourself and question the thoughts until you experience a gap of no thinking process, no mind, and start realizing what remains then. But who is doing the questioning, sir? The mind. And <laughs> so are you, not, are you not going in circles? No, because when the mind questions itself, at a certain point which nobody knows, the thought disappears and you remain as pure consciousness. consciousness. It can only be experienced. All the rest would be intellectual discussion that can never be understood mentally. See, that's my problem, son. I, I forgive me. Yeah. I, I, you know, I, I understand. I, I, uh, forgive me, yeah. uh, but, but, but but you know, um, uh, I'm, I'm sure you figure out. I, 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 I'm of a scientific persuasion. But but but, but uh, what you talk about is is is, is, is very subjective. Yeah, as you say, it needs to be experienced, um, so it's and the not realm subjective. of science is is, is, is is an objective issue. You know, one it needs to be quantified, it needs to be measured, it needs to be, you know, it's the, it's the reason why we are what we are and where we are. We have we've been able to measure and and disqualify. You talk about thousands of years of received wisdom. A lot of that received wisdom has been debunked by science. Um, it is the reason why we are. You know, uh, uh, for a matter of speaking, the, the, the healthiest, longest living, uh, wealthiest um, uh, in, in the history of civilization, because we've debunked some of the myths of all the received wisdom, whether it's religious, philosophical, or, or, or otherwise. Because we I, question. I disagree. I think we're the poorest creature on the on the planet because we are beggars. As long as we get attached to a desire. What is the difference between the one who begs for food and starving and then the one who has a billion dollars or has companies? They are both the same beggars. They are deluded, identifying the cell, themselves as a separate entity. We think we have wealth. All the wealth that is naturally created in nature, we just take out and, uh, and exploit. I don't sure. see it wisdom.
I see it ignorance. Now let's leave it that apart. One second, just I'll point. Let's say all the science is right. Yet, no, I'm not saying that. Let let's. I'm going this direction. I'm not all saying. Right, let's assume that. Let's assume everything that science is right. Now, my experience that when I identify with my beliefs, I experience suffering. So let me start be a little bit experiencing freedom from that suffering. Yes? So in order to experience freedom from that suffering, science would not help me. I have to look inside me, right? Because if I'm the one who's suffering, I have the one, I'm the one who's going to remove that suffering within me. So let me examine my thoughts and my belief. And maybe when I would have a glimpse of just a stop of the thinking, obsessive, obsessive thinking in the mind, and I would experience silence that is not, cannot be imagined, cannot be quantified, yet there would be a true experience of freedom. That's what I'm interested in. But, but, but you, I, 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 you must stop me if I'm going on too much. But, but I mean, the purpose of the mind is curiosity. You, you, you've just said it yourself, that, that, that you, know, you want to investigate, you want to inquire, whether it's direct internal inquiry or even external objective inquiry. Yes. The purpose evolutionarily of the mind is curiosity. We are curious beings. And this is in itself a curiosity that you've asked me to, 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 to investigate. Am I, am I correct? Yes, because I would say it's not even curious, it's much more. It's a very strong drive for the mind to go back home. It lost, it forgot where home is, wandering all around creating, trying to create the home, and the only way out for it, or the only way for the mind to come back home, is putting its attention inward. When it's going out, it just keep creating. It cannot see because it's farther away from the light. See, if there is a flashlight, the close, the farther away you are from the source of light, the more darkness there is. This is going out. The closer you go with the mind, I'm talking with the mind, closer to the source of the light, the more light there is. So, all I say, if we want to experience the, the source of light, which is who we are, we have to direct the mind back to the source of light, and it cannot be done going out, because you get further away from the light, and there's more and more darkness. And one has to see it for themselves. If you look no, within... Indeed, it's, 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 it's very subjective. I mean, unfortunately, it's not a quantifiable thing. It's not a quality that one can investigate, is what you're saying. I mean, you know, it, it, to put it in a very basic form, uh, you, you, uh, the way I would perceive it is that you are saying that there is no... Um, there is no equation that measures consciousness. That's right. This is where... <laughs> Science will never be able to realize consciousness in the object. You think? They already they got stuck all the time. They won't be able to. You know why? Because the mind cannot define something or measure something that is beyond it. So it always would get stuck and would create or come to a new conclusion, which would keep him moving and searching, yet as long as it's going out, it's not in the direction that it can rest in consciousness. Because we're talking for the mind to rest in consciousness rather than um, understand something about consciousness. This is why scientists, there is a, a saying that Buddha, let's say if there was one 2500 years ago, when he looked within, he worked with the sensation. He realized that what he called in Pali, kalapas, that the subatomic particles in the body are moving in really quickly in the body, so fast. And the more he was looking in within it, 
he stopped getting attached to the changes that happened in the body. Yeah? So now, science, they find that there is a, a, the subatomic particle, so I don't know enough about the, the details, is moving really quickly. So the story is that the people who were with Buddha and the people who went to, to the one who were the greatest scientists, when they went to the greatest scientist who realized all what they said that was happening, they were miserable with this understanding. And when they went to Buddha, he realized the same thing from within through the experience and he was free, liberated. So through science and mental understanding, it would suffice to just... Um, the mind to be, uh, say, I know, I understand, without the experience directly of it. And when it is experienced directly, then it's nothing with understanding. It's truly experiencing pure consciousness, truly experience being free from identifying with the thoughts to be real, truly living without beliefs running your life this is freedom truly living without fear this is freedom truly living with a clear mind in a harmonious way without internal war is freedom through experience nothing to understand about it the understanding is just to work with the thoughts in order to directly experience it so I can read something and understand it. I can read something and then experience it. So I can go to a restaurant and read the menu. And I would salivate from the menu I'm reading. And I can go to the restaurant and eat the food and be satisfied. So only when I eat the food, because I look within and I examine and I directly experience it, I start being satisfied. Otherwise, the mind will go to the next restaurant and read the menu. And then it would salivate again. Still not be satisfied, go to the next restaurant, read a different menu. And it would judge the menu. It would say, this food is not so great. I think, wow, this is really amazing. And it would start stimulating the, the saliva or stimulating the, the glands and as long as the food is not eaten, there's no satisfaction. This is the difference between intellectual or philosophy and practicality, truly living, awakening the mind from awakening the mind. And the more the mind is awakened, the more it can rest in the beingness of who you are, which is pure consciousness. And this is the ultimate, is, is a direct experience. So, then it doesn't matter what the science say. Let's say the science say all kind of things and I experience true peace, true happiness. I say, I respect you very much, the science. Yet, if I follow you and I experience agony, fear, stress, a restlessness, dissatisfaction then science is not satisfying for me that's all this is how I look at it and I don't negate science I think what science brought is great I just don't see how me understanding how quantum even physics work liberates the mind and I'm not sure that the scientists who realize it are liberated and this is what we're talking. Being liberated. Liberating the mind. No, I, 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 I agree with you. Um, I mean, what you're saying is, 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 is that being intelligent and being educated and being wise are three separate things. Yes. They don't necessarily go together. I, I, I understand all of that. But perhaps one needs to ask the question or, or, or turn the question around to you to say having 
having come to that realization um, that you have, which is an entirely subjective experience, as you said, um, how does one go about living in the relative world? You know, I, I'm not sure w whether you know uh, your daily life is involves um, fear anymore, uh, involves possession, involves pursuit, involves desire. Uh, the, the, these are the trappings of the relative world. Uh, are you saying, having arrived at the station that you've arrived at, um, these things become irrelevant? It almost feels uh, um, nihilistic. You know, it's, it's nothing. Nothing matters anymore. I say, why don't you examine your beliefs and experience, and then share with us what is your experience? So you can start with small steps. Let's say there is a belief that cause you pain or cause you to be restless or sustains fear in you. Just experience without this belief what is your experience, step by step. And see if your life is more freer and flowing in whatever you're engaged. So oh, indeed it is. Okay. It is. I, 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 I do that. I mean, because then this is know, the having answer. Re having got to the stage where you realize that, you know, um, you, you, I am a phenomenological self. You know, the, the phenomena that, that transpire in my life create myself. And having realized that these phenomena are largely, you know, the observer is the observed. Because it, it, it's only the mind that experiences. It cannot actually understand an external object. It's the mind that perceives and makes impressions. I understand all of those things and I inquire on a daily basis where I can um, um, what it is my, 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 my feelings are, my passions are, my pursuits are and try to tease out how my thoughts influence the way I am. But that in itself is a mindful process, right. you know, it, it, it's, it's a biological process, it's okay. a neuronal process. That's okay, then you do that until there is, the clouds are removed for a second and the, the sun shines through. Maybe the process mentally that you go through is not direct enough, so it still keeps you with the objects of the world so the clouds are not removed so anytime you look up you don't see the sun so then the sun is just an intellectual understanding and the experience if you you see the clouds keep examining the beliefs until the cloud is removed and let the sh then the sun shine through maybe one glimpse will change your whole life once Yet, unless you look within, that glimpse might not come, unless it's going to be a coincidence. Yet, if you have the yearning to have this glimpse, you have to pursue and look within and question and challenge the thoughts themselves. Challenge and check if the thoughts are real. Challenge and check who are you when there is no thought, when there is no thought who am I and be still enough to experience what remains it's very intimate no science can give you the answer of who am I or without this thought who am I and who is the one who even thinking and without the thinker who am I be still for an instant and inquire and maybe the sun which is pure consciousness reveals and then it's no more a theory it is a direct experience and the more the mind inquires that direct experience open up less clouds more the sun is shining through and this is the most important I think for the conversation to take is to say okay I understand, let me now examine, let me see if I can truly experience what the wise, the sages point, that I am pure consciousness, let's see 
if I can with the mind remove what obstructs it and have a glimpse of it because one glimpse can change your whole perception of the mind because it's beyond the mind and it doesn't harm the mind harm the mind it brings more light because when the clouds obstruct then the sun doesn't shine through when the clouds are removed there's more sun there's more light this is more luminous lum, luminosity more clarity well perhaps you have the sun i i, I have i have lots of cloudy days but but i wanted yeah. to ask you it's internal um, not external <laughs> well even internally i have lots of gray days um but but it would seem to me looking from the other side because you're clearly on the other side of the fence <laughs> as far as i'm concerned um, it would seem to me that, that having understood all those things, um, one's daily pursuits in life almost become irrelevant because it, because every thought you, you, you every thought you, you analyze, you begin to realize it's the pursuit of that thought, whether it's for money or desire or. Uh, bringing up your children or whatever it is, security, they're all thoughts as a result of fear. Everything, you know, our, our, our pursuits in daily life are often driven by fear. Having yes. understood all of that, you just sort of think, well, I would, I would imagine one thinks, what the heck? It doesn't work that way. That's, okay. that's how the mind scares itself. This is really good, this example. It doesn't work that way. This understanding that you share it has to be seen in the moment the thought appears. I mean, the moment the thought appears, you have to examine. And then you would notice many hours during the day, you forget even to examine. In that moment, you believe that thoughts to be real. And this is the habits playing themselves out. So don't be concerned that suddenly life or the mind would be in a halt and stop and that's it. It rarely works that way. And if it would happen to your mind, it's grace. Because then it's you, grace. Yes, you wouldn't be concerned about anything. You'd be absolutely free. Yet, yes, but then, how, but, but then what does one do? I mean, because, then you wouldn't be concerned about that. It's rarely, you wouldn't be concerned about it. Yet, it rarely happens. So don't worry. <laughs> Just start step by step with one thought at a time examine and then you see how much the mind doesn't examine itself this would give you honesty and integrity from within to see whoa how much i am in forgetfulness i identify with this idea and this belief and it triggers me and creates me emotion and i didn't even ask what was the cause of this emotion what was i identifying with is this thought was real even so don't be concerned it doesn't happen like a jump and that's it a mental understanding without inner seeing in the moment doesn't free the mind yeah because the the mind says so if i would uh, not be attached to thought then it's already attached to an idea that scares itself about the future indeed, <laughs> indeed. so indeed no, indeed, I, I, I agree, and and and, and um, I, I, maybe I'm taking up too much of your time, but but, but <clears throat> it, it, it begs the question next. You know, is there any free will? Because a, a lot of the things that we do um, are as a result of our thoughts, which have historic basis. As you said, you know, the mind has has only the the the, 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 the past and the future, <clears throat> and so continually, you may think that you want to have a a cup of tea or or. Um, eat some ice cream but actually that thought process has already occurred you know in your mind so there's no free will it, it, you know you, the mind sort of races in terms of trying to understand the whole phenomenology of what's going on in your brain you know what i'm saying it, it's 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 like piccadilly circus so what i suggest is that regarding whether one has free will or not you take it's another it, question altogether yeah you reflect up upon it and then we'll schedule another call and then we'll take a look from there. That way you start to examine, really look within and see 
if you can have a glimpse of no mind, the stream of thought just stops for a moment in your daily life. And then about free will we can uh, have another discussion. I think this is good for now. It's for the mind to take in, take a look, examine, don't believe anything, challenge it from within you. Not by looking at other theory, theories outside of you. And then we can talk uh, whenever we talk. We can schedule a time. Yes, sir. Very Thank good. You very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.